Hello, I am Lori Langley, first senior mentor in Southern Indiana. The first Indiana robotics community is very happy that you have joined the family and become one of our 2020 first Lego league challenge teams. And we hope it's a wonderful experience for your students. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we anticipate that you will encounter unique challenges during your season, but we're here to provide support and guidance from start to finish. So you, your students may continue to get the most out of their first experience. Ultimately, your local health and safety regulations and the guidance in place at your schools will impact how you proceed with the FLL Challenge Program. And if at any time you find you're unable to meet with your team in person, I encourage you to reach out to me and um, I can help you create a plan that will keep your students involved from home. The purpose of this presentation is to go over the things that you should be thinking about as you start your season. I will move right through this presentation, but of course uh, you may pause the recording at any time uh, and take a more careful look at the details on the slide. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me via email or text and I'd be happy to, to discuss whatever concerns you may have about getting started. On the slide, I'd just like to point out a couple of logos that you may want to include when you are creating emails or documents to share with your team or parents. On the left, you will see the new First Lego League uh, challenge logo. First Lego League was recently rebranded, so this term now encompasses the three Lego-based programs, uh, Discover, Explore, and Challenge. These represent three of the five first robotics programs offered to pre-K through grade 12 students, uh, the other two being first tech challenge and first robotics competition. And the logo uh, on the right is the season's uh, replay logo, which is specific to first Lego League challenge teams. These logos can be found on the firstinspires.org website. So here's the agenda that will follow. You can see it includes a snapshot of what the First Lego League Challenge program is all about. Uh, but in the future, I will create other presentations to take a deeper dive into each of the major areas, uh, providing more details about the robot game, the innovative uh, project, and the first core values. So if you're watching this presentation, it's safe to assume that you've already registered your team and you have received your equipment. Uh, now you need to select students who will participate in this season's replay challenge. Uh, there are many ways to organize a team. Uh, some schools will form a team with participants from the same grade, while others will have mixed ages on one team. Uh, if you have a lot of interest, you may need to host tryouts or interviews to select uh, students. Uh, you may want to get teacher recommendations or approvals or prepare a test or even ask students to submit an essay explaining why they want to be on the team. Um, the other big consideration when forming a team is the number of team members you select. Uh, you're allowed to recruit 10 team members ages 9 to 14, uh, but this number will depend a lot upon your physical space, your research sources, your parental support, and of course the social distancing rules in place at your school. Try to have enough students that you can keep ideas and creativity flowing freely, uh, but not too many that all students cannot actively uh, engage in the process. Probably one of the greatest challenges for this season, thanks to COVID, will be creating a schedule and sticking to it, uh, especially with some of st the, your students fluctuating between remote and in-person learning. Um, and since every school is operating under their own unique circumstances, it's a challenge to map out even a suggested schedule. So perhaps just look at this slide as a best case scenario uh, and encourage your students uh, 
to practice flexibility and patience. Most school teams tend to meet twice a week for an hour and a half to two hours per session. And as you get closer to competition day, uh, you may find that more meetings are necessary if you're able to. Uh, you can also assign homework though, so uh, that uh, work can be completed throughout the week at home. Uh, this is especially important for the project because by assigning homework, you can more effectively make use of the time that you have uh, when you are together with your students. We always had a mo motto on my team uh, to make sure that you always come to uh, practices prepared and ready to work. Uh, I encourage my team to communicate with each other uh, throughout the week um, by email. Uh, I encourage them to share research with each other, to ask questions of each other, um, and to alert each other of any uh, challenge updates. Um, first, uh, We'll often post updates uh, to the website um, if there are any tweaks or changes within the robot game challenge or the project challenge. So you wanna make sure you uh, keep up to date with that. And those uh, challenge updates can be found at the firstlegoleague.org website. Um, I have listed some additional homework suggestions on this slide so you can take a look. Um, at your meetings, it's also really important to strike a balance between all three areas, the project, the robot game, and core values. Um, the core values should, of course, be integrated into everything you do. Uh, stopping to have those important conversations when things are not going quite right or even when they are, um, and taking the time to celebrate and encourage your team members is a great way to integrate those core values in everything that you do. Um, it's also great to include fun um, and sometimes silly team building activities during your meetings that help get students working as a team and communicating effectively with each other. I will talk more about that in a few minutes. This is a copy of a page from your team meeting guide, which gives a nice layout if you plan to follow a 90 minute uh, team meeting schedule. And this of course can be adjusted as necessary. The first time you meet with your students, I encourage you to de dedicate some time to talk about what is at the heart of all FIRST programs, and that is the philosophies of gracious professionalism and cooperation. These are big terms that you will hear again and again in the FIRST community, and they direct the social and emotional learning of our students. Gracious professionalism and cooperation are put into practice through problem solving, friendly competition, and working together as team members um, in search of solutions. This ethos was developed by Dr. Woody Flowers, who was a distinguished professor at MIT and who collaborated with Dean Kamen back in 1992 to develop the first robotics competition. Our community suffered a great loss when Dr. Flowers passed away last year, but you will see that his memory and passion continue to live through our students across the country and across the globe. I'd like to play this video for you now. Hi. I'm Woody Flowers, and I've been part of FIRST for a long time. I really love how FIRST helps us learn that working hard can be fun and profoundly satisfying. In FIRST, we do our best work while helping others and treating folks with respect and kindness. This ethos is something I like to call gracious professionalism. As you go through this FIRST season, please remember that it is extremely important in fact, it's expected that you practice gracious professionalism. Everyone, first students, coaches, parents, volunteers too. It's not always easy, but it will make first a sweet experience. And it can have a big positive impact in all areas of your life. So go be kind and creative.
Dr. Flowers also coined the term cooperation, which, as the name gives away, is a combination of cooperation and competition. It is founded on the idea that teams can and should help and cooperate with each other, even as they compete. Cooperation means competing always, even fiercely, but assisting and enabling others whenever you can. But cooperation is not just about how your students relate to other teams. It should also drive the interactions within your team. Cooperation involves learning from teammates and teaching teammates. It involves managing and being managed. It's about knowing when to be a leader and when to be a follower. These two concepts, gracious professionalism and cooperation, are truly what sets FIRST programs apart from other programs. And it's most definitely what drew me to this program almost 10 years ago. More than hoping that they know how to build a robot or apply STEM skills, I want my own children and those who I mentor to treat each other with dignity, respect, and empathy. So I really think it's important for students to be introduced to these concepts of gracious professionalism and cooperation before you move on to the six uh, core values um, that they will practice and embrace throughout the season. But let's move on to those now. Uh, I love that the core values are the same for all FIRST programs from pre-K to 12th grade. It creates a consistency as students work through, work their way through the, the uh, various programs um, while they follow the same guiding principles. Um, it also reinforces the fact that even though these programs have their differences, First participants share something very meaningful and special. So uh, the core values which are listed here in this image on the gears are discovery, innovation, inclusion, impact, teamwork, and of course, having fun. Um, they're about how the team behaves and works together to tackle a common goal. They should be demonstrated by all team members and at all times. Make sure your students know the core values, not just the six words, but the meanings too. And even better, make sure they can provide concrete examples of how they as a team demonstrated those six core values throughout their season. Another good topic to discuss during your first few meetings is that of your team identity. This can be linked to your school's mascot or your school's history, uh, the current season's theme, or anything else that gets students excited about working together. You will be assigned a number that remains unchanged from year to year, but your name is a bit more flexible. Some teams enjoy changing their name each year and often make it reflect the project solution or the season's theme, as I said. Um, but others keep the same name from year to year. Uh, names and team branding should reflect the team's you know, unique spirit and creativity. Um, to give you an example, I coached Team Storm. And as you can see from this image, uh, the team wore blue shirts with storm clouds and lightning bolts. Uh, and this became our team brand. And uh, we included it whenever we wrote uh, letters to experts or sponsors. You know, maybe they were writing thank you notes or sending out emails. Um, when they created posters, they made sure that they included their, you know, storm clouds and lightning bolts. Um, when we hosted events, we had that branding as part of the event. Um, and even when we decorated our pit area at competitions, we uh, were sure to bring the storm with us to those events. Um, while that storm brand branding was a uh, constant for Team Storm um, through their eight years on their first LEGO League team, uh, they always found ways to change it up a bit each season by including accessories like capes or hats or gloves that reflected the theme um, of the season. 
Another early conversation you should have with your team should be about setting goals. Rookie teams may find it helpful to print the rubric that judges use to assess your team um, on competition day. These can be found on the first Lego League or first Inspires websites. The rubrics will help you see where you want to be at the end of your season. From there, you can set weekly, monthly, or even season long goals and really be sure to get everyone involved in this goal setting process. Um, but again, live by the rule that everyone needs to proceed with flexibility and patience this season. Dean Kamen, founder of FIRST, has said, and I will quote him directly here, um, we're not using kids to build robots. We are using robots to build kids. And I just love that because FIRST truly is inspiring our young people to be science and technology leaders by equipping our students with self-confidence, communication skills, and leadership. Um, and all that starts with your team. So giving every student a meaningful way to contribute to the team and when possible to lead the team in big and small ways um, is really important and will allow your team to start building those skills right away. Um, I have listed some ways that you can divide those roles and divide the work, um, but there are so many more ways to do it. Um, I find it's always important to remind students that it's not up to the leader to do the work, but to ensure that the work gets done. Uh, learning to lean in and trust your teammates is a really important skill for our young people to learn. So I touched upon team building activities a little earlier and I want to revisit that now. Um, I liked to structure team meetings so that there was time to include a fun team building activity. We usually did this when we were transitioning from, say, the robot game part of our practice to the project um, or vice versa. If you search the internet, there are loads of quick and easy uh, team building challenges that uh, can get your team working together to solve uh, a problem or task, um, many of which can even be done in a remote setting. Um, you might have the team build a Lego tower that's taller than the tallest student on the team in a specified amount of time. Um, you might want to have them create a bridge with marshmallows and toothpicks. Or as you can see in this photo, um, I had my team here create a square shape while blindfolded using a, a jump rope, um, which is much harder than it actually looks. Um, after the activity, it is really important to talk about how uh, the team accomplished the task. Uh, did they work together? Um, did they listen to each other? Did they communicate clearly and kindly? Um, it's often necessary to remind your students that um, the most important thing about these activities is not whether or not they accomplished the task in the required time, but rather how well they worked as a cohesive team and as gracious professionals. In your first few meetings, your team building activities could actually be um, breaking into groups to build the Lego mission models for the robot game. Uh, this typically takes two to three hours for a team of eight to 10 students. Um, Use only the building instructions provided by FIRST and work in groups of two or three. This is a great opportunity to assign roles within the small groups. Um, someone within each group, for example, can sort the Lego pieces, someone else can build the model, and someone else can be checking for um, accuracy of the build. Um, rotating these jobs is really helpful also so that everyone can feel um, equally involved in the process. The last thing I want to address is the remote competition, though I will provide more details in a future presentation about this. Um, all First Lego League Challenge events will be remote across the state of Indiana, which means you will not be traveling to an event this season. Instead, you will create a five minute video to explain what problem your team addressed, uh, demonstrate how the team solved this problem, 
share their research and list the experts that they consulted and the people with whom they shared their solution with. This five minute video along with an optional robot presentation video will be submitted early November using a remote event hub. You will also provide a video with three two and a half pre-recorded robot rounds that are time stamped within a single day. Additionally, you will be given a scheduled time uh, for a live remote interview with three judges. Uh, that will mirror a traditional judging experience. Questions will cover the innovative project, the robot design, strategy, and programming, and of course, the ways your team demonstrated the core values. The interview is basically an opportunity for teams to share their body of work and um, all they've accomplished and discovered throughout the season. If you're looking for more resources, be sure to check out the digital resources available to you through the new ThinkSpace portal, uh, which can be found when you log into your first dashboard and follow the steps that I've laid out here on this slide. So thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about the first Lego League Challenge program. I hope you're feeling ready to get started. Um, good luck to you and your team, and please reach out to me if you have any questions or concerned about moving forward. I'd be happy to help. All right, thank you.